Hey everyone, Mr. MC here. This is Gata for Laguna Seca with the Subaru Dario X Group 3. And let's get this started by mentioning that we're on the racing hard tires. Don't mind if you can hear the raindrops is raining pretty hard over here. Brake balance was a plus one in time trial, but zero for the race. And let's go ahead and get this started by mentioning that eventually you want to bring yourself towards the right side of the track and break before you reach the three board. So just as this tarmac on the right starts. Brake hard for a while, slowly ease off of the brakes as you turn in. Gently get under throttle as it's really easy to generate wheel spin with these racing hard tires. Then just before the gravel on the left starts, that's where you want to use just a little bit of braking and you can briefly go down to second gear then back up to third gear to try to force a bit more rotation onto the car. And you'll see me do it on a couple turns like this one. So for example with this one, just use a little bit of braking before the one board and then you can see me just briefly go down to third gear to force a bit more rotation. Then bring us up towards the right, brake before you reach the two board before the banners on the right. Brake hard for a short moment and slowly ease off of the brakes just take your time going through this turn as it's long and drawn out. Then bring us up towards the right, brake just as you reach the two board. Use a little bit of braking, but be careful about hitting the sausage curb as it's possible to lose control if you hit it too hard. I got pretty lucky over here. Carefully get on the throttle, avoid the green stuff. Don't get more than two wheels on it, otherwise you will spin out. Then for the corkscrew, you want to brake before you reach the three board, so brake hard for a while. Brake right here, by the way. Brake as much as you can in a straight line. Ease off of the brakes as you turn in. And just as you start to point towards this empty area, that's when you want to start to get on the throttle. A little bit of throttle control so you don't spin out. Carefully lift off of the throttle as you make this left turn. Bring yourself towards the left. Break at the two board, but use just a little bit of braking. You don't want to hit the sausage curb or end up going too wide. Just be nice and careful through here. Bring yourself towards the right. And finally, brake just before you reach the three board, just after the curb starts. So brake hard for a while. Slowly ease off of the brakes. Very careful on the throttle. It's easy to generate a lot of wheel spin here, and you're good to go. So let's go ahead and take a look at the race strategies. And actually, before we even go there, go to race details before you enter the race, because you're going to see that this is another one of those races where you have to pit at least one time. So make sure you do it at some point in your race so you don't get a one minute penalty after the race ends. So we're doing 14 laps at Laguna Seca with the group three cars and we're only using the racing hard tires. So there's no sort of tire requirement. Fuel is a times two, so fuel is not an issue. Tire wear is a times four, tire wear not an issue. So if we didn't have the mandatory pit stop, this would have been a pretty easy zero stop, but because we do have to pit, you will, well, need to pit. So you can pit at the end of lap one at your earliest or at the end of lap 13 at your latest. You don't need to take fuel. You don't need to change tires. You just need to enter the pit stops and that will satisfy the requirements. And yeah, these racing hard tires, they're not that good here. Uh, it feels really sketchy to drive them. Even for a car like the Subaru, it feels pretty sketchy to drive on them at times. I mean, I think this is one of the easier cars to drive here, like in a second, but just with the racing hard tires, it made it a little harder to navigate through here. And I think you'll see one example where I overshoot the braking point and end up cutting the corkscrew. So I'm going to pick up a half second penalty. The penalty is not the worst thing because the half second penalty is pretty short, but the dirty tires, it's pretty brutal, especially with the racing hard tires. So you're going to be sliding around even more. You can see me do it a bit right here. Just, yeah, it, it's not that fun. I'm just going to let second place on um, by so he doesn't have to deal with my shenanigans as I'm just like sliding around. There we go, sliding around. 
And yeah, in a moment, I'll end up serving the penalty. There's only one penalty serving zone here at Laguna Seca. And you'll see me not lose that much time. So here we go. We're at the smaller back straight. This is where the only penalty serving zone is. Serve it, and that's kind of it. You don't lose too much time as long as it's a small penalty like that. But the dirty tires are your real penalty because, yeah, the dirty tires here not that fun to deal with but let's go ahead and take a look at the pit stop process so this is going to be the lap where i'm going to be pitting at the end of lap 11 once again at the end of lap 1 is the earliest you can pit at the end of lap 17 is the latest you can pit and you don't even have to choose tires or fuel you just go into the pit stops and you're good to go so let's go ahead enter the pit stop it's going to take about 10 trillion years to make a simple left turn and enter the pit box. I don't take tires. I don't take fuel. I think second place didn't take uh, fuel nor tires as well. And we're just going to be standing here just waiting around for our car to come in because the pit loss here at Laguna Seca is pretty brutal. It's actually around 20 seconds and that's only if you do a stop and go. If you take tires, you lose an additional 4 to 5 seconds, which is a lot here at Laguna Seca, especially with this track being pretty hard to get an overtake done at. So you only want to do a stop and go, a drive through, whatever you call it. Just don't take tires, don't take fuel. If you take tires, it'll be really hard to make up the time back, especially if you have to deal with traffic. But anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at the final lap where I'll talk about places to overtake and the penalty serving zone. So the main straight best place to get overtake done because after that it's going to be really hard to try to get a move done. I mean this track is already hard enough to get a move done. You pretty much need to get the best exit ever or the car front needs to either serve a pretty big penalty or they need to completely screw up a turn. The next potential place to get a move done is through here. So this is where the penalty serving zone is. And after that, it's going to be extremely situational to the point where it's pretty much going to be really hard to even get a move done. I highly don't suggest going for a move right here because otherwise it'll end up in disaster if you go too wide, just like that car, he ended up going ahead and started building some sand castles. The corkscrew, really dangerous place to go for a move. Can it be done? Yes, but it's really dangerous. It can also end up in disaster. And after that, the last place to try to get a move done, if possible, is their very final turn. As you have a really sharp turn, go for the inside line and try to get a good exit. And that's pretty much it. This race is around 19 to 20 minutes long. So this is a bit of a longer daily race C. And once again, make sure you pit one time. And in terms of the go-to cars for this race, well, it's a little not that straightforward. So in the time trial, you may see that the Renault RS01 is a top choice for the time trial. And that's because in time trial, the Renault RS01 handles these turns like a champ because the Renault RS01 is really good when it comes to medium and high speed corners, which is what Laguna Seca has. However, in the race, the meta kind of just broadens up, it opens up, and a lot more cars can be viable here. So the Subaru Dora X, Volkswagen Beetle, Porsche 911 RSR and the Persia RCZ are a couple of the good cars here. And the latter two that I mentioned, so the Porsche and the Peugeot, really easy cars to use. So definitely check those out as well. Also be careful to here because I almost bend it right there. Just wanted to show that. And someone may ask why I didn't use the Renault RS01 for the time trial. Uh, the main thing is that I wanted to use the same car for the time trial and the race and I also wanted to use a car that was a little easier to use, one that wasn't going to have me pulling my hair out 
So I went with the easier choice, which is the Shubaru Dory X. And also, um, I was using this car so I can have an excuse to use the Shuba Shuba sound. But anyways, that's pretty much it from me. Thank you guys for the support. Thank you to Placey for supporting the channel as well. So that's all from me. This is Mr. MCA. Wish you a good race and I'll see you in the next video.